Hi everyone, my name is Lois Arata and I'm an artist and printmaker based in Providence. I'm here to talk about my new exhibition called I Had Other Plans at the AS220 Aborn Gallery from April 3rd to April 24th. To visit the gallery, it's appointment only, so you can come on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Saturday, and you can schedule an appointment with Neil Walsh, or you can schedule with me. I'll be here on most Saturdays. So I had a different plan for this exhibition uh, that was going to be based around my family's history with Japanese incarceration. My paternal grandmother was interned from 1942 to 1945. And the last time I showed work at AS220 in 2017, that's what the show is about. And so initially I had planned to further that work, but I had a little bit of a hard time getting started in the pandemic. The prints that I was planning to make were a little bit more involved and would have required me printing at a different studio that I um, don't normally have access to. So that threw a wrench into things. And also um, a few weeks before the show opened was the shooting in Atlanta. And so I wanted to make these posters that you can see behind me as a response to that. So in addition to the work about anti-Asian racism, I also have a piece called Tally. And it's a series of small red text weight sheets of paper that are sequentially numbered. So I work at a letterpress printing shop, which means that I have a tool called a numbering machine that can go into the press and will advance every time a sheet is printed. So so this piece is a visual representation of every death in Rhode Island that's attributed to COVID-19. So at the time of install, we were at 2,613, um, but we're already, I think, to 2,630. So I need to add in some numbers. I printed all the way up to 3,000, um, and I've got another few weeks on the show, so I'll keep updating as I come in on Saturdays. For me, looking at all the data, it's sometimes hard to understand what the actual count means. So I wanted to have this vis visual representation so that you could actually see see uh, what that looks like in this form. There's another series of prints in the gallery called Signals, and they're letterpress prints based off of nautical signaling flags. So it's a geometric flag at the top, and then the letter and what it represents underneath. So O means man overboard, uh, for instance. I just thought some of the sayings were really poignant. Um, there's one about uh, signaling that you've been vaccinated. There's one about um, I am disabled, please communicate with me, that felt very appropriate for these times of COVID. And also for me, the signal flags are a nonverbal form of communication. So I've been thinking about that a lot in uh, communicating with people with masks on, where sometimes I can't properly hear someone and a voice is muffled and I'm worried I'm misinterpreting things. But also in terms of fake news. Um, so, you know, thinking back to misinformation and just different ways that information is not conveyed correctly. Um, I also have some pieces upstairs from a residency that I completed last year at In Cahoots in Petaluma, California. And they have a great collection of wood type and some um, Vandercook printing presses. So I made a huge poster that's based on a quote from an Octavia Butler book called Parable of the Talents, which was some of my uh, quarantine pandemic reading, but it's all about choosing your leader. And so I completed that piece right before the election, um, but it, it felt tied to the pandemic work in a lot of ways for me because of how poorly handled the pandemic was. I think in a lot of ways, the anti-Asian sentiment and xenophobia really ramped up with the Trump administration uh, and the real mishandling of the pandemic, calling it the China virus, uh, the Kung flu. It, it brought all of that racism that's usually hidden uh, into plain view and really encouraged and emboldened a lot of people to speak uh, very frankly and very directly. Uh, for me, uh, I've been working on a campaign for the last few years to try and um, encourage Rhode Islanders to rethink the naming of Victory Day um, with a hashtag project called Rename Victory Day. And for me personally, it made me a little nervous. Uh, I got a lot of uh, nasty emails. Um, last year. And so, you know, usually when we print something like this at the print shop that I work at, I say, hey, I'm going to be here on a Saturday, come pick up posters. And then I suddenly realized that was a really bad idea because I was in the space by myself and suddenly everything felt um, just a little more heightened or stressful than usual. So it, it has really changed the way that I have conducted myself. And I think that's true of a lot of people in the community. I think with a lot of my artwork, it is based around my identity as a Japanese American person. And I really want to highlight, you know, the injustices that have been done against the Japanese American community. So with a lot of the printed editions that I have and the more fine art letterpress pieces and the posters, I really want to bring light and awareness to just an issue of always feeling like an other and always struggling to feel like I have to fit in. 
and just struggling, um, you know, with being different. So really that's the goal of my artwork is to get people thinking, um, hopefully educate and hopefully bring people to have a conversation um, in a place where we can have a civil discourse and, and come to, if not an agreement, at least a, a common place where we can talk. I couldn't make this uh, work alone, and so I'm so thankful to have uh, help from Katie Guy, who helped me install, Chris Ryan, who also helped me install, uh, Rue Sakayama, Matt Cavallaro, Aya Mariyama, and Liam Van Vliet, who helped me with certain pieces of the installation. I want to say a huge thank you to Dan Wood at DWRI Letterpress, um, who's my boss, and helped me uh, by letting me take some time off to work on the show and also to print these posters. And also a huge thank to Neil Walsh, who helped me install all of the work, including the grid of 26 signal flags inside. Um, and also to AS220 for hosting this work and uh, being a platform to share on. So thank you.